the class will be focusing on uh, some aspect that uh, all of us need to know um, before getting into the commenting and studying the saying of Al Imam Sufyan Thawri. To know first who is Sufyan Thawri, and before knowing who is Sufyan Thawri, we need to know who, is, who are the Salaf and what is our relation with the Salaf. So that's the class is entitled Learning the Suluk from the Imminent Salaf. The Imminent Salaf. The Salaf, uh, there's two words the Salaf and the Khalaf. Salaf and Khalaf. A salafu are the predecessors, and a salafu are known to be the rightest predecessors. Al khalafu with the lam maftuha, al khalafu with the lam maftuha, are the good followers, you know, who come in after the generation after the salaf. Al Khalfu, Al Khalfu with the Lam Sakina are the evil or the uh, wrongdoer generation succeeding the Salaf. So there's the successors, the good one named Khalf, and the bad one named Khalfun. Khalf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُ الصَّلَةِ and then succeed after them, Khalfun, a wrongdoer generation, they neglected and they uh, turned away from the Salah. The ayah that I have mentioned in from Surat, Surat Al. Surah Maryam, Surah Maryam. Mm. For us who are the Salaf, and uh, why should we, uh, and maybe this class we would like it to be more interactive when we come to the discussion, inshallah, or to the study of the quote, because our quotes in very uh, variable subject, but the most important that I'm going to uh, emphasize is what we need to study from this quote. What uh, you know, we're targeting as inspiration, as incentive, because there's a lot of beautiful quotes, even you find them in, you know, uh, wise quotes that they are nice, but they're not have, does not have, you know, a relation with our faith, with our path. Uh, but the Salaf has, they had a, a very uh, particular and specific points that we want to emphasize and focus on. So, before starting, do you have any question concerning the Salaf, concerning, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we mean about the Salaf? We're going to discuss that. But uh, many people, they use the word the Salaf. Huh? Many people, they use the word the Salaf. People, they say, for example, someone is Salafi and things. W what does it mean, you know, before getting there? Do you know the end? You know, if you have a question or we'll explain. Tabi'ina are salaf. Yes. Taib, the salaf, as I said, are the rightest predecessor of this ummah. So, who are the salaf? We can read this hadith, huh? this hadith in the Sahih. Qala an Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma an in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can read on the thing. Qala khayrun nasi qarni, khayrun nasi qarni. The best people are those of my generation. Qala thumma alladheena yalunahum. Then those who will come after them. قال then ثم الذين يلونهم and then after them. And those who will come after them. So in this hadith, how many generations the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned? Three generations. His generation, the generation after him, and the generation 
that comes after the generation after him. So we have the generation after the Prophet called at Tabi'in. The generation after the Tabi'in called Tabi'i Tabi'i. The followers of the followers of the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Tabi'in, they learn the source of the deen from the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The companion, they learn it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. And Tabi'i Tabi'in, they learn it from the uh, student of the companion of the one Allah Ta'ala and in the generation of the Tabi'in you find the Kibar Tabi'in was Sigar Tabi'in Kibar Tabi'in is like the oldest from the Tabi'in who they witness or they been in companionship with more than you know a dozen of of companions Sigar Tabi'in he might only you know so or being in companionship with one companion because it's a generation uh, you know and the longest some of the companion they lived mashallah long hmm. however when we say someone he's salafi when someone you say he's salafi what the mean so we know now what is the salaf and look the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam قال ثم يجيء من بعدهم قوم تسبق شهادتهم ايمانهم وايمانهم شهادتهم uh, this is here subhanallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam describing will become whose witness will precede their oath and whose oath will precede their witnesses and this is kind of a description of ضياع uh, الامان so how can someone witness you know on thing before he give his, his oath, look, precede their oath. So before he make his oath, say, you know, even now, people, they say, I, 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 I take the oath to say the truth. And then he witness. When people, they witness even before the oath, which is mean, there's a confusion in even how to express the truth. And there is no that true trust and a man to carry the message of the truth. So again, who are the Salaf? The Salaf are the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tabi'in Now, just to uh, explain things to not uh, be confused, a salafu nothing have to do with the salafi. A salaf, who are the rightest predecessors, and again, those who follow them, be ihsan name khalaf. Those who follow them, in the wrong way. They name Khalfun, Khalfun. Eh? When we want to really follow the footsteps of the Prophet, وسلم, who should be our role model? The Prophet. And then those who follow the Prophet وسلم, in the right way, who are they? The Salaf. So the Prophet وسلم, he's given us reference for the best generation existed is in the ummah are the first three generation according to this hadith and simply because they were the the closest to the source the closest to the source the farther you are from the source the less authenticity you get i mean look uh, when you are in the spring of water the closest you are the, the more fresh and clean water the farthest you are from the water like you going in a stream the more there's like it's gonna dirt and then it's leaves and things so the farthest you are from the from the spring or from the the starting of the stream uh, the less subhanallah the, the water is pure
However, a Salafi, it's a, it's a way, it's a way of practicing the deen of Islam according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Salaf, the Salafi is defined by following the school of thought of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal and the Aqeedah, what we call Aqeedah Salafiyya, which is Aqeedah al Hadith, which is portrayed and, and known by Imam Ahmed. So those are called Salafi. Doesn't mean that anyone who's, of course, following other. So here the Salafi is more as a concept referring to the jurisprudence applied, implemented, and the type of the structure of thoughts that they have about the Aqeedah. So nothing have to do with the Salaf, which actually they are, they're, they're referring, this is how they refer to the Salaf. Anyone who is Salafi, fulfilling or following uh, exactly what the Imam Ahmed brought, which is the son of the Prophet and having the sound aqidah, so he is from Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah. The same who's following the madhab of Shafi'i, the same who's following the madhab of Imam Malik, the same who's following the madhab of Imam Abu Hanif. So we cannot say the Salafi, by reference, those who are following the Hanbali school are the only people of Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah. You see the difference now? However, the Salaf are the body of the people who lived in the generation, the first three generations. That's the Salaf. And this, the Hadith witness. The, just this is have the outlines, and then, inshallah, we're going to study the book that will. For those who be resisting, they find it, inshallah. We'll try to print it, inshallah. Or the saying of uh, uh, Al Imam Sufyan al Thawri. But it's going to be, uh, you know, the book in Arabic and the, the study will be, uh, of course, in English. The paragraph here is in the introduction uh, the importance of studying the seer of the Salaf. The importance of studying the seer of a Salaf. A seer in their life. So the seer is more like the biography. When you say biography, I mean, it's very close word to seer, but the seer, the behavior, the character, the saying, the, the, the life, what they did, etc. It's very important from, from different points, and we mention uh, here, it's a reminder for us that the attributes of the believer described in the Qur'an are real, not fiction. And this is very important. Because in the time of today, when we read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the believer, is like science fiction, right? Like people, they cannot sleep the night. It becomes science fiction. People standing the whole night in sujood and qiyam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala complimenting them, I mean, when you see the worship of Ibrahim, how he talking to his people, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the believer, about their jihad, about, you know, their position. You see the story of Yusuf. You see the story of the noble ones in the Quran. It seems like something is beyond what the human being can even achieve when you look at the society of today. The study of the Salaf, it shows you the evidence and the proof that these people truly exist and you can be one of them. It's not something that, subhanAllah, is impossible to reach or to achieve. True people, because following the guidance, they really achieve and attain those level of piety. So the study of the Salaf can be practical, the concrete, you know, proof and evidence that those that Allah described in the Quran exist truly 
they existed through so the Prophet Sallallahu when he gave, was given the, uh, the example, for example, to Habib ibn al-Arat, telling him, you know, people before you, they bring them and they dig for them like a ditch and they put them inside this, uh, this hole and they bury them and only their head will be uh, apparent and they bring the saw and they, 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 they do, you know, they kill them, they torture them and they saw their head and said it did, does not change or like shake their iman. So the Prophet ﷺ was talking about the Salaf, you know, to the generation before him, to give the example to the companion of the one Allah Ta'ala Alayhim. So he's telling them, you're being persecuted and Allah helping you to be patient. But this patience, it does not have kind of, you know, you regulate its limit. When you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will help you to be patient. So someone, for example, cannot come at the point, he said, that's it, this is my limit of patience. I don't accept it anymore. This is beyond what a human being can, can bear. That's what the Prophet ﷺ was teaching, Khabir. So the siyar of the Salaf help us to understand and to show the proof and the evidence that the Quran is talking to human beings like us. He's not talking to supernatural people. He's not talking to supermen or superwomen. He's talking to human beings like us. Therefore, we have the capacity to be like the Salaf. Because when you read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is anyone among us had the option to be righteous or not righteous. We don't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calling us to be righteous. Therefore, every believer, every believer, he need to strive to be righteous from the salihin. Why should we talk about awliya Allah? when you are the first to be concerned to be from awliya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Attain it, do it or not do it, that's, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hand. But having the intention and striving, that's subhanallah, that is required from every believer because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make racing and competing is the core aspect of traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sari'u ila maghfiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin ardu wa samawatu wa al-ard. And the other ayah. Sabiqu ila maghfiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin ardu wa ka ardu samai wa al-ard. Race and compete for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a paradise that which with is like the width between the heaven and the earth. That's the first point. So studying seer of a Salaf is very important for us as studying the seer or the life of the Prophet because it gives us firmness of our heart. You see your own family because the Salaf is your own family. Who, who is your family? Who are your ancestors? The ancestors are the rightest believers that you greet every day in your Salah. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Who are ibadullah salihin? Every right as you greet in this whole universe, past and present, and whoever who gonna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide, you know, to the end of time, including the, uh, the, the angels and including the jinn kind. So that's the first point. So what we read in the Quran, help us to see true examples that they fulfill, that they really were like the Qur'an. The second point is witnessing the blessings of implementing the values of the Qur'an and the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. These are endless blessings. When you read the seer of the Salaf, you see, subhanAllah, their confidence, their trust, their reliance, their tranquility, their bravery, their courage, their subhanAllah, they lived for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that whoever who act in righteousness, male or female, and they are 
uh, believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them a joyful life. When we study the seerah of the Salaf, we understand the meaning of the joyful life. Joyful life is not a luxurious life. Joyful life is not a, a life of comfort and a life of, you know, of, uh, of uh, fulfilling one's desires. It's totally different life. So it's also is a reference for us when you st study the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, you understand what the meaning of joyful life. Uh, joyful life, uh, Ibrahim leaving his, uh, you know, wife and his baby son uh, in the plain desert. I mean, a believer, non-believer, he cannot comprehend. When I came to know many people, from other faith, they, they became atheists, if you can say, because of that story. I said, Alhamdulillah, that in Islam, we have the element of faith helping us to understand such a thing. Because look afterward, what happened in Mecca, all the blessing in what happening or what happened and what is going to happen around the Kaaba, goes, subhanAllah, to that event. Look the blessing. So witnessing the blessing of implementing the values of the Quran and the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. We see how Allah defends the believers. We see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watch over the believer. He see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide for the believer. We see the life of bliss for these people when they are implementing the values of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's an example for us, it's an incentive for us, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a boost to know that it's a really guaranteed path and it is the right path. Because sometimes one in the midst of his journey, he will stop and ask, am I on the right path? You know, when seeing like difficulties and things, but when he studied the people before him, those who are, you know, poor fully and completely in the path that he's following, that give him the boost in his heart. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealing to the Prophet, the story of the, uh, of the Prophets before him, to have him that firmness in his heart and that serenity, uh, as Allah mentioned it in the end of Surah Hud. The other one is uh, standardize the characteristic of the true role models. And this is also very important. Because who is a true role model? Can a role model change or his characteristic change according to the environment, according to the agenda that exists in that society? Can a scholar or student of knowledge will change his way because to satisfy other people and then he's going to become a leader or spiritual leader. So the Salaf is for us, it had that, you know, kind of standard characteristic, which is really in full coherence. And it is the implementation of the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this next paragraph, uh, studying the similarities between the believers of today and the Salaf. This is uh, an aspect, uh, you know, added to see that we have the same starting point. The same starting point. The first one, vulnerable, weak nafs by nature. The Salaf as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we didn't put two hearts in the chest of a human being. The Salaf, they didn't have double heart, right? Today when you buy a car, huh, the more you pay, the more the car is powerful, right? So if you want to race with someone who can have in a car with half a million dollars, you know, from the first second, he's going to be like, you see him like you need the, binocular to see him, right? In belief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everyone the same. So the Salaf, they didn't have double heart or they didn't have 
anything, subhanAllah, that we don't have today. So the weakness and uh, the vulnerability of the nafs is uh, natural in us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah wants to make clear to you the lawful from the unlawful and guide you to the good practice. Allah yuridu liyubayyina lakum wa yahdiyakum sunan alladhina min qablikum wa yatuba alaykum. Allah wants you, Allah wants to forgive you. So imagine, huh? And Allah is knowing and wise. Allah wishes, Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum wa yuridu alladhina yattabi'una al-shahawati an tamilu maylan azim. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال Allah يريد وخلق الإنسان ضعيفة Man was created weak. So this is in this ayah. Actually I missed to put the ayah that is here. The ayah the ayah after it, uh, in Surah An-Nisa, uh, 28. Here. يريد الله أن يخفف عنكم. Allah wishes to lighten the burden for you. And man was created weak. So the nature of the human being, we are weak. So which is mean the self also they were weak. Huh? So this is similarity that we have. So we cannot say the self they were, you know, they have an advantage. One of the great advantages say this, the companion they saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Is an advantage. Who wish that he, you know, lived in the time of the Prophet ﷺ to see the Prophet? It's a tricky question. <laughs> Sir? It's a tricky question. You might say, Alhamdulillah, I didn't live in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And truly, Alhamdulillah, why? Because if someone lived in the time of the Prophet, he might be in alliance with Abu Jahl. Huh? Abu Jahl, he knows that the Prophet was messenger of Allah. And we, we love the Prophet وسلم, we adore him, and we, we are his brother, the sisters are sisters, as he said, because we believe in him, we love him, and we didn't see him. And look, the kuffar, when they saw him with arrogance, قالوا, الذي بعث الله رسوله? Is this one? So imagine someone modest passing in the street and someone with his, uh, you know, lavish uh, clothing and things. And he looked to someone poor. He said, oh, this is the person I told you that we need to follow. He said, this? So imagine we'll be in that situation and you say this, and that's it. Allah put seal in your heart, wal'iyadu billah. If you look down to the Prophet So the, the, this is, the similarities are the same. That weakness, if someone had the disease of arrogance, he would never be able to respect or to love the Prophet Never. So arrogant here in today's time, you take him back to the time of the Prophet with the same seed of disease, he's not going to believe in the Prophet. The people, and you know the hadith, many people they say, what about people that you didn't hear about Islam? And they are not Muslim. Or they only heard about Islam very negative things. So they don't believe that Islam is the right religion. Because the information they get is wrong. For example, Allah is the most merciful. So if someone comes in the day of judgment, comes in the day of judgment, he say, Ya Allah, 
I didn't hear about Islam. You didn't send me a messenger. Maybe the person that who talked to him about Islam, he was not a good example. He was a rude person. So Allah knows. So what do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do? You're going to tell him, no, you know, you had the Quran around you. There's many Muslims around you. There's, you know, the, the, the Muslim women, they were wearing hijab. All of that, you didn't see it. You're going to say, yeah, Allah, but I didn't know about you. Or what I knew is about this religion. Tayyip, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, as in the hadith and mentioned by uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Al-Qayyim, uh, and the, is, it is in Al Muslim Al Imam Ahmed. Allah will test that person. He's like he just received the message of Islam, like in the dun. Just I'm relating this to see to tell you. Like it will not help us today if we'll go back to the time of the Prophet Sallallahu to say that we might, you know, like we will have more Iman. That's not right. Allah will test the people, Ahlul Fatarat, those who didn't have a messenger. I gave the example of people, they will be begging Allah. We didn't know about Islam. And Allah, the most merciful, he tests them. The test will be Allah order them to accept him. Said, okay, I am your creator. Will you accept Islam? So what was the test? What will be the test? Said, of course. Said, then go enter there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered this person to enter fire. It's a big test. Whoever entered that fire, that's the one who truly accepted Islam. And if Islam came to him in this dunya, he will have accepted. Because the fire is a curtain to paradise. And the one who acknowledge that he is Allah, he is God, and refuses to go through it, then he didn't accept Islam. And this is the test for those who didn't receive the message of Islam in this dunya. Going back to our topic, it is the similarities between us and the Salaf, the weakness exists in them. I'll give you this example. Look, the companion of the one Ta'ala alayhim is a very important topic. We mentioned in, I, I believe, in uh, when we studied the, the seerah of the Prophet Look, as your Lord caused you to go out from your home with the truth and verily a party among the believers disliked it. It's a fact. It's, it's a fact, right? They disliked it. They didn't want to go. Yujadilunaka, disputing with you concerning the truth, and this is in Ghazwat Badr, after it was manifest, as if they were being driven to death. What does it mean? They were scared. Being scared that it reduce or belittle from their greatness, Allah Not at all. Why? Because that's our nature. That's the Prophet Sallallahu Can a believer can be a coward? He said, yes. Something that you cannot control. Can you control fear? What should we then say about Musa As soon as he saw the stick, you know, turning into snake, he ran away. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, you, you, should, you cannot be a messenger? أَقْبِلْ يَا مُوسَى وَلَا تَخَفْ Come back. It's the nature in us. So emphasize on this point to not say that the Salaf are supernatural or they have things that we don't have. Of course, they were closer to the source. Their environment was greater. That is a fact. 
But also the environment, they have a very big fitan. Look, the fitna that happened in time of, of Uthman, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Look, the fitna that it happened in Waqi'atul Jamal between Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala an, and his dearest brother, Zubayr, and Aisha, radiyallahu ta'ala an, was in the other side. Big fitna. So these are very important points for us, you know, to understand the Salaf. This great people that we are alike, we are the same. And man supplicates for evil as he supplicates for good, and man is ever hasty. It's another nature in us. Al insan wa ajula, the meaning that the prayer that man should make for good, he make it for evil. He believed like he, oh Allah, give me money, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. He's like every day, every morning, every night, every sajda, he's asking for the money. Taib, who's telling you that the money is good for you? Someone is begging for his disgrace and misfortune. Right? How many people they get rich and they cannot even enjoy anything of what they get at all. So this is nature in us. And the Salaf had it. I'll give you another example for the companion of the one Ta'ala alayhim. Allah describing for air as their fear, which it means that it does not reduce or diminish anything from their faith or anything from their greatness of the one Ta'ala alayhim. Or it does not confuse or does not uh, in, in any way doubt in other, their truthfulness. It's our nature, and this is very important to understand. And that's why the Sharia, as we have studied in the class of the uh, of the Dawah, we have the, the, the difference between realism and, and idealism. The reality, the Islam talk to you with your with facts, with your capability, with your ability. Even Islam taking consideration your emotion. He said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, If it wasn't the mercy from Allah that he showered you with, that they came close to you. And you were, if you were like a harsh person, you know, someone was like stiff, you know, and hard heart, they would not even be able to be around you. And if you contemplate and reflect on the ayah, which is me like, if they left because of a prophet who was not merciful, Allah would not blame them. Why? Because the message must be mercy, sure, merciful, and the way to convey the message must be have that mercy. It is part of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Islam not only taking consideration your ability, but also your emotion, your emotion. Standing, you cannot stand, you are tired and, you know, sleepy. <coughs> the Prophet said, say, go sleep, don't pray, don't. The command, go sleep. When you finish and you sleep and you wake up, then go pray. Uh, Surah Al-Ahzab, and one of the most difficult... Uh, uh, battle again to to see this aspect that I'm I'm talking about and this uh, aspect that we are talking about is very important why because also we should not look at our self in in a supernatural way then we venerate them in a way in an excessive way that when we fall into the shirk because Salaf becomes saint, and saint, you know, being given attribute of the divine, start to make tawassal and making dua, oh, Sidi so and so, that's, that's also is a big problem and is the path of the deviation. Therefore, understanding our Salaf from this perspective, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, is very important so they can be our role model, but our role model in the right path. Not thinking like they are supernatural, you know, and they achieve things that no one can achieve them. 
Of course, we cannot advance the companion of the one Allah Ta'ala alayhim. You know, that's a fact, and that's the consensus of our scholar telling us such a thing because it's a fact. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala revealed that he's uh, pleased with them. Huh? Tay, look this A. When they came upon you from above you and from below you, and when the eyes grew wide, look the description, and the hearts reached to the throats, and you were harboring doubts about Allah. Did Allah blame them? Or it's, it's a natural thing, subhanAllah. So this is a fact. So what we have, a fear, you should not blame yourself for it. What you have, you know, any nature of, uh, you know, weak uh, things. However, there is a thing the Prophet Sallallahu said, that's not for the believer. Like lying, anything that you control and is within your choice, you're going to be blamed for it. Ask Allah to help you to remove yourself from it and to repent. The second thing that we have the same is the guidance of the Quran and the teaching of the Prophet. And that is the most beautiful thing. So you see, in this paragraph, we know the similarities, which is mean that we have the same starting point. Weakness plus the same tool of guidance that help them to be great people, noble people, we have it. Taib. The aspect which led to hold the Salaf in high regard, what make them to be great people? The first thing is knowledge, because that guidance that guidance, you only can get to it only through knowledge. That's the first thing. So we're going to see Al Imam Sufyan al Thawri in his relation with knowledge. So when we say, I want to be like Al Imam Sufyan, I want to be like, uh, like Al Imam Ahmed, you can. Allah wa you can. But of course, with the distraction with things, maybe with the environment we have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. As he said, he said, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, at that time, the one who's been holding in his knee, like holding on a core of fire, and he said, you know, the reward, uh, they will be rewarded, uh, the reward, you know, 50 times of the action of one, of one, uh, you know, 50 times of the action of, of, of a believer. So the companion, they said, uh, you know, 50 times from among them or among us. He said, among you. So the environment also has a play role in your striving, which is mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you based on the intensity of your striving. Hmm? So the first thing, I should So the place of a knowledge in the life of a believer is a key, is a center. It's his life. It's his future. It's his identity. His knowledge. Are they equal those who knows and those who do not know?
The second point after knowledge, the knowledge produces an active and dynamic fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Active, which is mean is always on, is like the engine. Like the engine. Look when someone, for example, the difference between someone has problem happen and he want to he his only way out is the a car to start the car it takes time right but if someone his engine the engine of the car is on he just get in the car and change the gear and he's out so that's an example and sometimes to turn the engine it takes time or sometimes the engine does not even start. The fear is like an engine in the soul. If you turn it off, it might be difficult to turn it on when it's needed. When someone is confronted to, you know, face to temptation that is leading to violation of the law of Allah, he has to bring that fear from the depth of the soul, like like ignited, just where well, yeah, fear of Allah. Where are you? So I can you know lower my gaze. Yeah, fear. That Subhanallah makes someone always in a very difficult way. If he's still mindful that what he's going to do is haram, difficult way of striving, kind of in a crisis management. And the crisis management it does not help. But if someone's fear is always on, active, then it's going to be dynamic, which is mean it's going to help at every moment when he needs it or when she needs it. And this is was their state, rahmatullahi alayhi. This is how the Salaf they live. That's what we're going to see in the life of Sufiya. Active, dynamic fear of Allah. Everything remind them Allah. Everything, subhanAllah, is regulated by that fear. The name of Allah, as we have mentioned, uh, we read the ayah which summarizes it all in the beginning of Surah Al-Anfal. The second one, acting in this life in regard to the unseen more than the seen. What's the meaning of this? All what they do is based on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them not of what they really see or they touch. He worked the whole day, there is no rizq. There is no income. But he's not concerned by income because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'm going to send you your income. So how to keep the peace of mind in absence of income why? Because trusting what Allah told you. How can someone keep calm in a battle of battlefield huh? when he saw the whole adu like 10 times more than them? But he had that serenity and comfort because Allah promised him something that is in his heart, keep him quiet. And so on. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you, it becomes your reality. What you're seeing is the virtual world. That is the illusion. Someone has a lot of money, for example, and he thinks that is, he has a power. The believer said he does not have anything. Example. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you, that is your reality. People today, they base their reality, they base their objective, they base their, you know, decision on what they have. I'll give you an example. All of you know it. the story of Jabir ibn Abdullah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in Ghazwat al-Ahzab. When he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for a few days, you know, not eating and like people, it, it's really hard. And the Prophet was tying around his, his belly Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like two stones. Everyone has one stone, the Prophet has two stones just to calm and reduce the pain of subhanAllah of starving. 
uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah, he went and he checked with his wife. He has a small goat. So how, how much this is will do? He said, she told him, if you're going to invite the Prophet, وسلم, maximum two with him. Two, not more. Don't, don't, don't put us in problem. He said, okay. So he ran, he went to the Prophet, وسلم. you know, while they're still digging the ditch, he said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, I, I would like to invite you. You, we don't have much, but two and maximum two. Maximum, Ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet ﷺ lived, he said, he said, Ya Ahla, Ya, ya Ayyuan Nas, all, all the army said, Jabir is inviting you. The whole army. Jabir got bewildered, he ran to, to his wife. He said, I think we have a problem. She told him what? He said, the, the Prophet, you know, the whole army is coming. But she told him, I told you, only two of the Prophet. You cannot. He said, it's not me, it's the Prophet who invited them. She said, if he invited them, then there's no problem. <laughs> he has to... When she, she did the, the, the food, it, it was a small container. He said, just give me the container. And the Prophet Sallallahu put his blessed hand and dread on it. The whole army they ate. So the Prophet was dealing with the situation with Atta Allah promised him or with the reality that he looked in the container. With what? <coughs> with Allah promised him. And that's how the Salaf lived their life. Based on the unseen. Based on what Allah promised them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, especially, you know, the issue of today is mainly the income, right? Everybody, you know, bills. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, promise you, it does not mean like you stay at home and you there like sleeping the whole day, said Allah promise me. No, that is a defect in the way how you, uh, you know, you go to your rizq. Because Allah uh, gave you the instruction how to do it by work and striving. But then put your confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how the Salaf, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim, they used to live. The uh, next aspect which uh, led the Salaf to be held at a very high regard and high esteem is the constant remembrance and mindfulness of the meeting of Allah. قال الله سبحانه وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة يوم خاف مقام ربه Fear the standing before Allah. Fearing the standing before Allah, it was constant in their mind. It was shaping their activity. It was directing their objective. It was, uh, subhanAllah, deciding into their choices. All of this, we're going to see it. So this introduction to help us give you know, know first the Salaf to see the true implementation with the saying of Al-Imam Sufyan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and uh, inshallah we read this one, and then we go to the prayer. Uh, the believers are only those who, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, feel a fear in their heart, and when his verses are recited unto them, they increase their faith. نَمَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا So, look, إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ إِذَا ذُكِرَ So here we have ظرف uh, and the ظرف is like every time. So he is like the continuity is a constant. Every time Allah is mentioned, they feel the fear. This is, goes back to the active dynamic fear. Every time they listen to the Quran, it increases their faith. Every time. So the engine of piety, the engine of tafakkur, of contemplation, the engine, subhanAllah, of, of qunut, of devotion, of khushu is always on. It's not like, you know, uh, we try to bring it in the salah, and uh, the best, mashallah, among us who 
reach to be have khushu' maybe in the last rak'ah or so on. So the khushu' for the salaf, it was outside the salah before to be in the salah. Many people they ask, say, how can we have khushu' in the salah? Said the khushu' you cannot have it in the salah. You have to have it before the salah, so you continue it into the salah. Because if someone was distracted, talking about the dunya, busy with the things far from, you know, his relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he comes to the prayer and he wants to have khushu. Well, that is require a big battle with his own nafs to revive that khushu in the salah. But if he was, if he had khushu before the salah, then the continuation of the khushu is going to be increased in the salah. That's why the companion, you can see their faces of fear while they do wudu, which is mean they are already in the salah before even to come to the salah. So when someone is in that state, when he reads or listens to the Quran, it increases faith. The one who established prayer, and from what we have provided them, they spent, those are the believer truly. Those are the true believers. For them are degrees of high position with their Lord and forgiveness and noble provision. Inshallah, we'll pray and we come back. We just, you know, uh, at the light of what we have said, we just do some comment on Imam Malik saying, inshallah, to, to, to conclude this introduction on the importance of studying the Sira of the Salaf. Jazakumullah. We'll meet you after the, after the Salah, inshallah. Thank <laughs> you.